Hey, Kenneth, how are you going? Just going to run through um, subtopic 4.4 materials and the first um, subtopic of that, which is polymers. Um, now, this video is, is um, intended to go along with your polymers notes, uh, the first notes document. So if you have that ready to go, filling in um, during the video, pausing at the correct time, then we should be sweet. Um, if we cover the um, learning intentions here, so this is what this video is going to co um, cover. So these two aspects of polymers. Um, basically addition condensation reactions of polymers and production of synthetic polymers um, and their properties. So let's get straight into it. Uh, so what are polymers? First of all, you've got large molecules made from smaller molecules called monomers. Um, and some examples of polymers, we've got different types of plastics. So we've got some uh, takeaway containers, plastic drink bottles. Um, we've got um, a plant. I'm not sure if you know, uh, you can see that there's cotton uh, there. So cotton is actually uh, naturally produced. We've got um, tire, which is um, including vulcanized rubber, uh, children's toys, um, lots of bottles for appliances, garden hoses, um, materials, lots of different things going on here. All of these um, are made synthetically. Some other examples of polymers, we've got proteins and the monomer um, of, the pro of the protein, which is the polymer, is the amino acid, which is the monomer. Um, we have a polymer of polyester, so um, a material, and a mon monomer of polyester is an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, which we know combines to make um, an ester. Plastic is a polymer, the monomer is an alkene, so carbon-carbon uh, double bond there. Um, starch is a, is a polymer, and the monomer of that is sugars, um, uh, basically how plants uh, store their, their food. And here we've got DNA, polymer, um, all living things contain DNA, and you can't see this here because my face is in the way, but we've got a monomer of four different nucleotides. So polymers, um, we've got natural and synthetic polymers. Natural, um, natural polymers have been covered previously um, in the organic subtopic, looking at starch, cellulose, and protein. So today we're going to be looking at um, the synthetic part. And to start with, we're going to be looking at addition polymers, uh, polythene, PVC, and polystyrene are some examples that we're going to use. There's two different types of synthetic polymers, addition and condensation. So different types of reactions, we need to know the difference between those. So first of all, we're going to look at um, synthetic polymers, uh, some addition reactions. I'm just trying to grab my face to move it here. So monomers are unsaturated. So unsaturation means carbon-carbon double bonds. Single bonds only is saturated, unsaturated, carbon-carbon double or triple bonds. So basically the monomer looks like this, carbon-carbon double bond, alkene. And essentially the, the electrons in that covalent bond, we've, we've got movement going on from side to side and we're creating single bonds instead of double bonds. Now this is the reaction mechanism, the fact that these electrons are moving in this way. You don't need to know that. Um, that's more university level chemistry, but the monomer looks like this. So this is the single unit. You've got your alkene. R can be any um, carbon chain. Um, so we simplify it with the R. And here we've got the, the polymer. Now the repeating unit is essentially um, with uh, annotated with square brackets and you can kind of label where it repeats so any of these would be a repeating unit with those square brackets there so you can see the h and the r um, alternate so you just want to identify where that repeating unit is um, so an example of addition polymer polymerization is you've got your um, alkene monomers and they're adding together. So there's no loss of atoms. There's no other molecules that are formed in this reaction. It's literally just the monomers adding together. Um, and how do they do that? Via the reaction mechanism um, shown previously. So ethene monomers uh, create polyethene or polyethene polymers. Uh, so poly means many. And here we can see that this molecule is very, very large. Now that's indicated by this kind of wiggly line here. Um, if you see that anywhere, that means that that polymer is going on for a long, long time. We're talking about thousands of repeating units, most likely. Um, and again, you can see that repeating unit there. Now this one, um, it just has hydrogens. So realistically, even though I put that as the repeating unit, um, it could even just be, um, because the monomers are carbon-carbon doubles, um, this would still be classified as the repeating unit, even though you could probably realistically just have the one there as the repeating unit because it's literally the same thing um, all the way through. Another example is, um, uh, so this is polyethene, or polyethene again. So it's not another example, it's the same example, um, but it can sometimes be drawn like this. So you've got that monomer, um, or repeating unit, sorry. So this is another way to kind of draw it. So instead of drawing the whole uh, uh, section of the molecule and putting square brackets there, you might just have... Uh, the repeating unit with brackets and have n and n could equal thousands so that's basically saying this is the polymer this is the short version of it that's the repeating unit and that's going to continue on for a long period of time 
Another example is vinyl chloride. So this is the monomer of vinyl chloride. So again, um, uh, an alkene, and then you've got a chlorine molecule there. So that's where the chloride comes from. And that's that monomer unit. And the polymer is polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC. You may have heard that before with PVC piping, uh, very strong, uh, very inflexible, um, resistant to weathering, all that kind of stuff. So here's our repeating unit. So we've got um, the H and the CL alternating there. So that's clearly your repeating unit and you might be able to have to draw the PVC polymer. It, you could draw it or you could see it represented like this um, in an exam. So another example is styrene. So here's the styrene molecule. You can see we've got an aromatic compound here. So this is a benzene ring. So we've got carbon, six carbons, um, and we've got that circle there, which indicates that you've got three double bonds that are alternating. So it's double, single, double, single, double, single. Um, you might see that drawn a slightly different way, but that's basically how that's represented. So the polymer there is polystyrene. So we can see that repeating unit or some of it. My face is in the way of some of it, but you can see most of it. And you could sometimes see polystyrene sometimes drawn um, like this just before. Um, the styrene molecule could be represented a slightly different way. So if we go back to see what it looks like, this format is quite easy to kind of um, represent your um, monomer and turn it into a polymer, which is a common type question that you might have to do. Um, but sometimes you might see styrene drawn in a different way. This is the skeletal structure here. So that is very different looking to the other representation, even though it's the exact same molecule. So that's where the tricks might come into play. You might have to take something like that and draw it as a polymer. So like that, that orientation is quite difficult in order to change. Um, so why does polystyrene have low density? The reason is because the benzene ring is actually quite large. It, it would be larger um, in terms of the difference compared to that single atom of hydrogen as represented here. So the fact that that is quite large, it means that the, the gap between each of these is quite large. Um, so you've got a lot of space there. So the benzene ring prevents the close packing of the polymer chains. And there you've got that low density polystyrene, perfect for your um, coffee cups, lightweight. So I'll need to, okay. So now an example question that you can try and do. Um, so pause the video, give it a go. Draw the monomer methylpropene. So here's methylpropene. So that's a representation you might get given. So you've got a methyl functional group and it's propene, one, two, three. Um, and you've got your, your, single, your double bond here because um, of the, the fact that it's an alkene and a section of the polymer that's formed. So the first thing you want to do is redraw this into this format because this is the easiest way to draw the monomer into the polymer. So you've got your carbon-carbon double bond there, but then how would you draw the rest of it? So instead of that being there, you might want to stick it down the bottom here. So give that a go. Um, draw, fill in these colors with the, the atoms that would be in there and um, unpause the video when you're done and we'll see the answer. Okay, so that's the answer there. Um, so we've got the two methyl substituents on the sides here. And now that you've drawn that, it's much easier to turn that monomer into a polymer. So here's your polymer molecule. So you can see that you've got your methyl substituents there, the double bond's gone, and then we can have those single chains there. The repeating unit, we would just have one of the, the methyls and one of the hydrogens square brackets around there. So the second one, we'll give it a go. Again, pause the video, draw it in a book, draw it on a piece of paper, give it a go, see if you're right. So we're gonna draw but1-ene and a section of the polymer that's formed. So here's your but1-ene, uh, but four carbons, uh, carbon one here has the double bond, um, because it's an alkene. Um, what are you gonna draw that as? So there's your carbon-carbon double bond. So what would the rest look like? Pause the video, give it a go. Okay, so here's our answer. Only hydrogens, and then we've got this um, uh, substituent here. So the ethyl substituent down the bottom here. Now this molecule is ready to go to draw into a polymer. So that's another thing that you can give it a go. See if you can draw that monomer into a polymer. Relatively simple, um, you won't, have enough room to draw the um, ethyl substituent like this. Well, you, you might, but you probably, the, the best way to do it in terms of how it would actually be correctly orientated following, following your Vespa configuration would be going down the straight line like this. Again, you've got your wiggly lines to show that that's only a small section of that polymer that would keep going. Uh, the branching prevents close packing of molecules, so that um, affects the molecule properties. So we've covered um, addition polymerization. Now we're going to go into condensation polymerization. So we're looking at polyesters and polyamides. So terylene is the example and nylon is the example of the other version. So here is um, uh, polyesters. So this is a molecule of terylene. 
So that's called terephthalic acid. Uh, so the the um, um, systematic nomenclature is benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. Um, it's not as scary as it sounds. So you've got a carboxylic acid functional group on both sides, and you've got a benzene in the middle. Now, you wouldn't have to remember that molecule, but it's just an example of the type of molecule that might actually pop up uh, within this uh, polymerization. So condensation polymerization is a little bit more difficult. Here's an alcohol. So this one here, ethan 12 diol you need to know the name of this alcohol monomer. You need to be able to name molecules. You wouldn't be asked to systematically name this one here because that's outside the scope of the course. So if we're making a polyester, to make an ester, we need to react a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So these are our two monomers that we've got going on here. So when we react these two, it's a condensation reaction, which means that water is formed. Think of in the morning when it's nice and cold and you've got your windscreen and you've got those droplets of water that's con condensing, that's condensation um, on your windscreen. So what we've got here is um, the alcohol and the hydrogen um, on these molecules. That's going to drop off to form your water. And then you're going to have the, your ester functional group, C double bond O, connected to this O here. And that's going to make your ester. So... This is the polymer chain now. So we can see in green, this was our um, ester, uh, sorry, our carboxylic acid. And then this was our alcohol. And we've got our ester link here. And we can have that repeated a couple of times. The most common question is to draw a polymer chain which has two uh, monomer units of each of those. And this, that's exactly what's been drawn here. Remember to space things out, draw all of your hydrogens, um, and the color coding does help. So the repeating unit is here. You need to be really careful here. Uh, try to go from one end to the other. It's just easier. Um, I wouldn't start over here. I would just basically, where's your ester link? And then start from the beginning of that alcohol molecule and then end at the, the I guess, the end of that um, carboxylic acid molecule there. So that's your repeating unit. It's got one of the brown ones, one of the green ones. Uh, nice and easy. Um, just make sure you're accurate with those square brackets. The ester functional group is here, and it's got multiple of those. That's why it's called a polyester. So another example of a condensation polymerization reaction is the formation of polyamides. Now an amide, we remember from our organic chemistry unit, is an amine plus a carboxylic acid. So an example is not nylon 66, and we watched a video of making nylon, um, and we may have had a go at it in the lab. So both monomers of this molecule have six carbons. Uh, so what are both of the monomers of nylon called here? So this is one of them. So that's an amine functional group. And you've got six carbon chain. So six is hex. Um, and then here we've got carboxylic acids. See if you can name both monomers. Pause the video, write it down, give it a go, and we'll see if you can get it right. Okay, so we've got 1,6-hexan-diamine, uh, or you can have hexan 16 diamine You can have the numbers in the middle, or you can have them on the outside, that's fine. Um, it needs to be a diamine, because you've got two. That's the most common mistake that I see students make, missing the fact that if you've got two functional groups, you have to have di. Amines are not terminal, therefore you need the numbers, because any of the amines could be coming off any of those carbons. So you need to be saying that's coming off carbon one, and that's coming off carbon six. But a carboxylic acid functional group is terminal, so you don't need to put numbers in because it's always going to be on the ends. So that's, that's going to be hexan dioic acid. Hex for six uh, carbons, even though, yep, we've got those two there, so that makes six. Um, and that's a carboxylic acid, so I, um, oic acid is uh, correct there. So in our condensation reaction, once again, we've got our amine and we've got our carboxylic acid. We're going to have the hydrogen and the alcohol dropping off. So again, carboxylic acid, the alcohol is dropping off. Hydrogen is dropping off the amine, just like the um, alcohol in the other molecule. So there we've got our um, polymer. I just want to move my head. It's not working very well for me, sorry. Um, so we've got the, the brown for the amine, the um, green for the carboxylic acid. Now, the way I usually draw these in class is have one coming up and one going down. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you're drawing the, the orientation relatively correctly and you've got the right atoms in the right spot, then you're pretty good. Um, so this one here is our amide or our peptide link. Um, so that you might have to identify that in an exam type question. So the repeating unit, I've just kind of uh, given you the second answer. What's the repeating unit and what's the amide group? So if we go through the previous um, example, what we wanted to do is start at the beginning of one of them and end at the end of the other one. So you green and you brown there. I wouldn't start over here. I'd start with the start of this green one and end with the brown one, square brackets for repeating units. So that's exactly what I've done here. That's your repeating unit. And the polyamide is 
um, this AMID link here. My face is always going in the wrong spot. It's quite frustrating. Okay, so an example type question, what is the functional group in this polymer? So we can see the polymer down here. Where's the functional group? Um, so what can we see here? I can see we've got this looking thing that looks like an ester to me. Is the polymer a result of an addition or a condensation reaction? Now that's an interesting one because this is the polymer chain here. This is a substituent from the side group. So what do you think about that? And then draw the monomer. So you wanna go backwards. This is the polymer. You wanna break it down to the monomer. Give it a go, pause the video, try it first, and then we'll look at the answer. Pause it right now. You, did, you didn't pause, did you? No, pause. Okay, um, so it's an ester functional group as signified here. It's an addition reaction. Um, most students will say condensation due to the answer in A because we just went through polyesters, but the this part, this carbon chain here is the polymer. So that carbon-carbon single bond is formed by an addition reaction with an alkene monomer. So all you need to do is take the repeating unit here and then turn that single bond into a double bond and nothing else on the side. Um, and then that's your monomer. Keep everything else the same. You can see the same shape that I've used. I haven't changed anything. You keep it exactly the same to minimize those mistakes. Here's a past exam question that's a bit tough. This is the formula of lactic acid. Draw two, uh, sorry, two lactic acid monomers form lactide and two water molecules draw lactide. So essentially you need to um, uh, break this up. Um, oh, sorry, two lactic acids form lactide. So you need to kind of put it together and make the water molecule draw, um, drop off. Now the difficulty here become, comes in the structure. So we can see we've got carbon, 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 and then we've got these functional groups coming off here. Change it to the form that we looked at previously where you've got your two carbons and then your substituents coming off of there makes it much easier to draw your polymer. Pause the video, give that one a go. Okay, so here was our hint. If you had a bit of trouble, draw it like this. So you've got, um, you're turning this into your substituents. So what goes here, what goes here, what goes, we've got some stuff that goes here. Um, so what we end up with is this molecule here. So that's the lactic acid uh, molecule. So we've got COOH, COOH, the carbon is there. And then this carbon is here. And then we've got C. H3 up here, a hydrogen which is not drawn on the skeletal structure coming off down the bottom here. And then we've got our OH coming on the side. Now, because it's a condensation reaction, water needs to drop off. So carboxylic acid, OH drops off, and then the alcohol, the hydrogen drops off. So this, these are the things that are connecting together here. These are the things that are connecting together. So we basically got a dimer and we've got two reactions that are happening here. So this molecule is gonna form an aromatic compound pretty tricky. So if I move my face again, this is what you end up with. So we've got C double bond O, which could be here, C double bond O, and that's forming a bond with an O, which might be here. Okay. So these O's, that O is that O and that O there. So we're forming an aromatic compound. We've got bond, 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 and then a bond down here, bond, bond, and then a bond down here, or up here, sorry. So Tricky past exam question, gives you a bit of an idea um, of how difficult these questions can be. So bonding between polymer chains. So we've got multiple polymer chains here. How do they interact with each other? First of all, there's dispersion forces. So all nonpolar molecules exhibit dispersion, oh, sorry, all molecules um, exhibit dispersion forces, but with nonpolar, that's the only force that they exhibit. So nonpolar polymer chains, and because these are um, organic molecules, mostly carbon, they're mostly nonpolar, but they might have some polar substituents, will bond to each other through dispersion forces. Nonpolar polymers include polyethene or polythene and polypropene, the ones that we looked at at the beginning. The dispersion forces operate along the length of the chains, and the strength of them increases as the length of the chain increases. Basically, the longer the chain, the more electrons, the stronger the dispersion forces, the stronger the attraction. With polymers that are only connected together, so the chains are only connected together by dispersion forces, these are the following properties. They're soft because the forces are there, but they're not overly strong, so they're not overly hard. They're flexible. They can be Their shape can be changed. Uh, they're non-elastic, so if you crush them or crinkle them, they won't go back to the original form. Uh, well, they won't do that very easily. They have low melting melting points and softening points. So you could basically heat them and melt them pretty quickly. They can be reshaped repeatedly. So they're suitable for recycling. So these are the better ones in terms of um, the effect on the environment. 
So here's a, I guess, a poorly, a poor resolution example of this. So here are our polymer chains going down like that. And then these dotted lines indicate the dispersion forces interacting between all of those chains. So we've got interactions, but they're not overly strong. Other bonding between polymer chains, we can have hydrogen bonding. I'm going to move my face again. So we can have hydrogen bonding forming between polymer chains that have that NOF rule. So hydrogen bonded to O, N or F. Um, and also carbonyl, um, C double one O, our carbonyl groups, they can accept hydrogen bonds, not form hydrogen bonds. Um, if they're present in side chains or link groups but, um, along the polymer molecule. So polyamides or polypeptides have hydrogen bonding between chains. So this is the example we can see here. So this is an N connected to a H. So that can inform hydrogen bonds and this carbonyl can accept hydrogen bonds. So that dotted line there is your hydrogen bonding. So we can see hydrogen bonding here, 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 and here. All those repeating units, they link up really nicely. The properties that that gives is greater strength, greater rigidity, and greater elasticity. Strength is pretty self-evident. Rigidity means it's not going to change its shape as easily. Elasticity means it will return back to its original shape if force is applied to it. So some more examples of hydrogen bonding between polymer chains. So this is nylon. We've got hydrogen bonding between nylon chains here. Um, here we've got Kevlar. So that's used um, in bulletproof vests. So we've got hydrogen bonding there as well. Um, and that's just another um, example showing that hydrogen bonding between those chains. Uh, another example of hydrogen bonding between polymer chains. We've just got a couple of different examples as I try to move my face out the way without pausing. So I'll skip through that relatively quickly. Um, so bonding between polymer chains, we can also have covalent bonding. So not just secondary bonding, primary bonding as well. So covalent bonds that exist between polymer chains are called cross linkages. And that's bolded because that's important, the cross links. If you have extensive cross-linking between polymer chains, that um, establishes a 3D network of structure. And um, now that polymer material is known as a resin. The greater the extent of the cross-linking, the greater the hardness, rigidity, brittleness, which means it will break um, rather than change shape or return to its original shape, increases durability, increases melting, melting point. So cross-links are formed either during the polymerization reaction or they're introduced by reacting a polymer with a cross-linking agent. So essentially you have your polymer, you add another chemical to it, and that kind of adds on and forms those cross-links. So here's an example in terms of a relatively simple drawing. We've got polymer chain A, B, and C, and then we've got our cross-links, which are covalent bonds. Primary bonds stronger than secondary bonds. Covalent bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds. Don't get stuffed up by that because usually we say, oh, hydrogen bonds are really strong, but they're the strongest secondary interaction, not stronger than a primary interaction. So finishing up here, thermosetting versus thermoplastics. So thermoset um, polymers, they're heated once during their manufacture. It's not in direct flame, but it's radiant heat, so like an oven. Uh, subsequent heating, they char. So basically, if you heat um, a thermoset plastic with a Bunsen burner, where you've got those cross links, um, they'll, they'll char instead of melting. Thermoplastics or thermosoftening, um, if heated, they become soft, they runny, they are runny, they melt, they can be reshaped, and when cooled, they can keep their new shape. So when we talk about heating, we're talking about like in an oven. So the difference, thermosets, we've got those cross linkages. Um, so we've got um, substantial cross linkages, and they prevent chains from sliding over each other. So basically those connections mean that those chains can't slide across. Um, if there's not many crosslinks, the polymer becomes elastic. If there's extensive crosslinks, the polymer becomes rigid and brittle. Thermoplastic polymers, no crosslinks. When heated, the chains slide over each other because you've got um, increased kinetic energy, increased movement. So those chains are just going to slide along and that's why they melt. They're easier to recycle. Um, and finally, the note here, um, if we've got um, uh, hydroxyl groups, they can form hydrogen bonds. So they're not called cross links, but they're called extensive hydrogen bonds like Kevlar. So if you've got hydrogen bonding, that's not exactly cross linkages. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you got something out of it and I'll see you later.